All right, Adam White here and, and talking a lot about fan data with Vince Arcandia from Stellar Argo. And Vince, obviously, you know, we head into 2020, there's a lot going on with how fans are looking at, at, you know, just giving up their data, how teams are looking at taking in their data and then how they're trying to figure out all the things that can come from that. What are you guys seeing in some of the, the trends that you guys are watching out for? Yeah, there's a number of big trends that we see out there right now. Uh, first and foremost, I think the demand for data continues to just increase. Uh, you know, sports properties are trying to understand their audiences better, um, the brands that they work with um, in order to sell the products and create the experiences that are really valuable. Uh, they've got to understand those audiences better. So we see the demand really increasing. Um, and as a result, uh, teams are trying to put in those infrastructures in order to uh, support the experiences that they have with fans on a more uh, real-time basis, uh, on a more uh, personalized basis than has ever been done in the past. Um, but some of these data problems are, are hard to figure out. Uh, so uh, we're seeing um, organizations continue to invest uh, in these areas. What are some of the hard things that, are, that they're trying to figure out? Yeah, I think the, the big one is, um, you know, the sports uh, audience and consumer base is so broad. Um, so getting your arms around who, what is my total sort of unique universe of fans that I have? Um, how does uh, that audience segment down? Uh, so that when I go to really scale that personalization with them, uh, being able to reach the right segments at the right moments uh, at the right, uh, with the right messages is really something that they're trying to do. Um, but I, I think uh, we still, you know, talk to teams today that are trying to get their arms around what is my total unique size, you know, where do they live, you know, what are their demographics, what are their economic behaviors uh, in order to sort of support more authentic discussions with and, them. And what does that data help, you know, as you, as you look at some of these things, right? Having a complete picture, I'm assuming, is for some of the people that you do work with has probably changed a lot of what they do. Yeah, it has. Um, and, you know, it's easy easy to talk about it at sort of a really high macro level, but when it comes to actually being able to personalize messaging to these, you know, millions of fans, and a lot of the fans, you know, they, they a lot of the teams know about, you know, a million plus fans um, that they can message through any of their channels. Uh, but, you know, scaling sort of personalized messaging and meeting those people on their unique purchase journeys and engagement paths with those consumers is quite, can be quite difficult. Um, so um, when you start to drill into the data, uh, being able to one, uh, make that data you know, accessible, actionable, you know, for the right people across the organization, uh, so that ultimately it benefits you know, the fan uh, is something that it, it is quite challenging to do with just the vast amount of data that these teams have um, that's oftentimes strewn across a whole number of systems, touch points, departments. And, and one of the things that I know you guys are big on is the single customer view and, and making sure that you guys can have a really good idea of that. And what are some of those points that from a single customer view that teams and leagues are trying to, to hone in? Is it, you know, birth date? Is it where they live? You know, what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, with data warehousing technology has been around since the 90s, you know, it's not really a new technology, but when it comes to a single view of the customer that's, uh, uh, that's performant uh, and is going to work for you in this day and age. It's still for a lot of teams is more of a, a pipe dream than anything, you know, like really having a single view of like my unique audience. Um, yeah, that does definitely includes things like, um, you know, what is their past purchase history, um, sort of at sort of a simple level. But then you start to layer in, you know, engagement data, you know, are they visiting my website? You know, are they on social? Are they on mobile? Um, being able to connect those data points and do that sort of identity the resolution across those systems um, you know there is more finesse uh, but technology has become more powerful as well um, so a lot of these infrastructures as well um, you know you might have some sort of basic single customer view but it's not going to support sort of a real-time interaction with a fan at an event and do you think there's almost too much data I know you mentioned there's a lot of data but is there almost too much data and what is you know what have you guys found to be like someone of the most actionable side you know bites of data yeah um, absolutely there, there's, uh, well, I'm a data person, yeah. so. <laughs> never too much there's, for you. There's never too much, but there's definitely, there's a, there's a, a right kind and a wrong kind. And for the, uh, you know, so for us, it, it's absolutely, it's about being able to go through those large data sets, pull out the pieces that are interesting. And, um, you know, when you look at things like economic data, as I mentioned, you know, demographics, geographic, psychographic, you start to pull that in. Um, you bring in interest data as well, uh, using the, the machine learning to be able to say, this is how engaged a fan is, um, this is their overall affinity for my property, 
Um, and then here's propensities for things that they might be interested in. And the Netflixes and Amazons of the world have been doing this for a long time. Um, they've gotten really good at it, uh, but being able to cut through that data and saying, in that moment, let's predict what this fan might be most interested in. And then once they engage with that content, being able to create that feedback loop is really where you um, create sort of a power, powerful environment. And you have this feedback loop, you have all this data, you have all this technology. Have you guys had to, I would say, train or re-equip people to make sure that they can handle all this? Obviously, because this is probably something that at least likely in the sports industry hasn't been seen as much as so as some of these other big industries that are a little bit further advanced when it comes to their data and their warehouse. Yep. Um, yeah, I think that there's, I think in general, the industry has, it continues to get more sophisticated. Um, we see the, you know, the teams making leaps and bounds in terms of, you know, the talent that they're uh, hiring and, and training uh, internally. Um, but it, you know, it, it's a journey and um, understanding, you know, the processes that, you know, support making this data really valuable is something that, um, you know, I really can't underscore enough. Um, you know, people talk a lot about, you know, the tools um, and the data outputs and the insights, but if you don't have the processes in place and the best practices um, in order to really make that data insight valuable, you know, it's, it's worthless, frankly. So as people build up their data warehouses and this technology, they also have to be prepared to bring on the people to, to manage that. And I think that some places that people are like, Oh, if I just do this, it's a catch-all. But no, I, I need to staff up over here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, the data collection front end is also you know yeah is an important part. If you're not collecting the right data up front, like if I think back to when you know CRM systems were even going in, and that's a data set that you know we integrate with all the major CRM systems, so we see a lot of that data. Um, and anybody that's used to you know working in CRM knows that the data is sort of all over the place. Um, so organizations get really good at budgeting and say, well, my CRM licensing cost is you know X, but they never budget for um, the fact that you need to you know, train your sales and service people on um, entering that data. Uh, you need to make sure that um, you have processes in place to uh, cleanse that data on a recurring basis. And so if you don't invest in those systems beyond just like a base licensing cost, you know, things break down. And so we're really trying to make sure and help the industry to put in those best practices. So they're collecting data on their audiences um, and then that data becomes valuable for them into the future. So